Christmas has come slightly early for one group of New Zealanders. And imagine having an argument or a dispute or a negotiation that lasts 18 months. 18 months is a long time. Well, that's how long professional firefighters in this country have been negotiating their pay increase or a pay increase and new conditions. Uh, They have accepted a new collective agreement from Fire and Emergency New Zealand which brings the 18-month, and media reports say dispute, I say negotiation, to a close. The agreement lifts pay rates by 20 to 24% and provides uh, for better conditions, including a screening program uh, for cancers, which are an occupational hazard uh, for firefighters. Joining us now is the head of the Firefighters Union, Waddy Watson. Waddy, uh, good morning. Welcome to the platform and I guess congratulations. Uh, good morning. Um, thank you very much. Do you think... Sorry, my voice is a bit, a bit scratchy. I've been um, across the country in the last 10 days at all the ratification meetings, so I haven't got yeah. a lot of voice left. But Waddy, 18 months is a long time to cut a pay deal. Um, why so long? Did it have to take that long for your members? Oh, it should never have taken that long. Um, it was way more than a pay deal for our members. The emphasis uh, in our claims was to uh, address pay, uh, which um, Graham Colgan report found was uh, significantly underpaid compared to other FEM staff and externally. But it was also to address um, what we call safe systems of work, uh, the real... Um, dire state of their fleet of fire trucks and appliances, the um, uh, unsafe levels of staffing um, and other other health and safety matters, including occupational cancer. It should never have taken 18 months. The first, um, uh, the first six months, Finch just uh, went round and round and round in circles. Um, it wasn't until May this year that we... Um, took a vote out and the membership overwhelmingly voted for various industrial action, including stoppages, uh, that we started to make some traction. And, and then it was only when the government intervened, not not with things directly. Well, the other thing is I look at this sector, and in some ways I look at it, the emergency rescue helicopter sector, the ambulance sector... Firefighting is kind of a mishmash of volunteers, uh, community groups, government, insurance companies. It seems to me, and look, I just want to clarify too, how many professional firefighters in New Zealand, how many volunteer firefighters in New Zealand? So there's uh, approximately 1,700, 1,800 career firefighters in New Zealand. Uh, The number of volunteers, uh, you'd have to ask Ian, that that changes and, and it's changed again in recent interviews. I think it's probably around the $10,000, uh, 10, mark, 11000 mark. That does change in their statistics um, and I don't have the latest... Does the availability of that volunteer pool make it more difficult for your members to get a better deal and does this mixture model actually work? No, not at the... Uh, the the fact that there are volunteers in careers doesn't impact on the negotiations for the careers at all, really. Although this time around, because of uh, many of the things we were seeking, we had a lot of support from volunteers because they they knew that if we got the processes up and running for uh, proper appliances, for example, that that would that would um, support them as well down the track. So for negotiation purposes, uh, it's, it doesn't really have an impact um, and it's, it's a fact of life and it's actually a really important part of New Zealand's fire service that we have volunteers and careers. We would never have the ability to have career firefighters in every town and location across New Zealand and that's pretty common for most countries as well. So, uh, But in the big cities and uh, in the large metro areas, um, they're, they're due to the risk profiles, which include residents as well as uh, industries and commercial uh, buildings, etc. There does need to be proper protection for the community, and uh, that's why these response tables and these response requirements and standards, and, and uh, in order for firefighters to be able to get uh, to a fire 
and undertake whatever is necessary within a set time, uh, they uh, they have to be career firefighters. Um, so uh, that is why we have both sets in New Zealand, and I don't ever foresee that changing. Uh, they probably will change uh, some areas that uh, should become career. Very little has changed in uh, what's been career or volunteer since the 1980s. And in actual fact, we um, have a few less career firefighters at the moment than we had in the 1980s. So the fire service has gone backwards, uh, and it's gone backwards particularly since there was FEMS. Uh, FEMS has put a lot of investment into um, uh, building a corporate structure and uh, building a massive uh, staffing in HQ, for example. And I think if you talk to volunteer firefighters, they would also say that their response on the operational arm has been neglected, as has the career arm. All right, but you can go off to Christmas and say, job well done, uh, I can have a bit of a rest now, Waddy. Well, we can have a bit of a rest over Christmas, but there's lots to do. We have to, um, we have to do a lot to implement this agreement and make sure, uh, hold things to the, the really important aspects of the agreement that uh, just don't flow naturally. We've got to make sure they happen. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning and uh, season's best to you and all your members. That is Waddy Watson, Head of the Firefighters Union. They've just uh, concluded an 18-month negotiation. It'll put professional firefighters on an average pay of $82,699, let's say $700 a year. And it cost uh, us $145 million, $100 million of that extra being provided by the government. There are the figures. But they do put out the fires, which uh, is a good thing to do. Good thing to do.